Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here participating in this event for the entire region to talk about the future and what is happening in the fintech industry, right, in the financial services industry in the region. Let me introduce myself. I'm Paula Belizia. I am the um, uh, COO, the, the uh, VP of Sales, Marketing and Operations for Microsoft in Latin America. Uh, and again, it's it's a pleasure to be here in such a transformational moment and such a special situation that we are all living together uh, at this moment in the world and for certain uh, in Latin America as well. So I'm here to talk about uh, a bit of our own learnings, our experiences and our point of view on what is happening right now in the world. If there is one thing certain is that everything is changing. Everything is uh, rapidly uh, moving towards you know, uh, combining work and, and home and the way that we communicate, the way that we are trying to be productive and taking care of all aspects of our lives and our business. This has been dramatically changing in the last few weeks. Um, we see that uh, there is lots of questions around what is going to be the future and what is going to be the transformation in certain industries. And the idea here today is to talk about what is certainly happening, uh, what we are living uh, in this financial uh, industry uh, for Latin America again. So let me uh, walk us through uh, a bit of our uh, view of what we are hearing from our customers. So I think one point that is important is we are changing to a remote everything, right? And this is not different for the financial uh, services industry in Latin America. We are seeing every customer, every um, financial institution really coming to companies like Microsoft uh, to transform and to help them go uh, remotely working, collaborating in a secure way, in a very productive way too. And I can share with you a few numbers that we have been seeing in our own operations. Just in the last three weeks, we saw an increase of more than 200% in our daily minutes in meetings. So today our new record, just to share a number with you, is actually 2.7 billion minutes in one day of people uh, online collaborating, in this case through our platform, through Teams. And this has been only uh, the beginning, right? We know that many more uh, actions in our day-to-day -day are going to be taken online. Uh, and this is, again, the, how do we see the trends coming? Another thing is that um, we saw remote working and remote learning becoming a trend even before the moment that we are living today. Right? More than 50% of the workers uh, in uh, productivity workers in the United States, for example, was already uh, moving towards the digital working. This is a, a research coming from Forbes that I wanted to bring to you. So in any way, so if this is the change or the, or the trend that is being accelerated by the moment that we are living, what are the specific things that we have been hearing from our customers in financial services sector in Latin America? So our customers are coming to us saying, you know, uh, our branches continue to be our main uh, point of operation, main point of contact with our customers. And therefore, we need to keep some of our employees there. But what is that? What does it mean in terms of maintaining that? For example, in Mexico, we have the government actually considering financial services one essential service. And uh, therefore, 50% of the branches are still uh, requested to be operating physically. So how to do that in terms of, you know, connecting still with the digital streams and what does it mean in terms of physical security of those branches, giving other things that are happening in our society uh, around more crimes. And we know that this is the case for Latin America. So branches are still the first uh, point of operation to, um, our to, to our customers' customers. Now, there is an increased need of going digital, as I just mentioned, but many of our um, financial institutions are not necessarily ready to do so and still providing a seamless experience uh, on the digital services, uh, providing also security um, on the backbone of all of that. This has to do with the customer's experience, but also with the employee's experience, right? We know that um, our, our employees in the financial sector 
are still working uh, with the needs of security, uh, with the needs of uh, protecting the information of our cust or their customers in their laptops. So there is an increased need of security going digital and our customers in this sector are becoming more and more uh, concerned about how to make that happen in a very fast way because we don't have time. Another thing that is happening is on top of the uh, COVID situation, right, that is a global scenario. In Latin America, we are suffering uh, more regarding the market's fluctuation and our currency's fluctuation. So there is lots of instability and there is a lot of impact in the liquidity of our markets. So how to deal with that, right, on top of the current crisis and how to make sure that we will be able in Latin America to, 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 to restructure the, the higher rates and, and people and enterprise loans as this crisis evolves. So those are kind of the challenges that we have been hearing and that we have been collaborating with our customers in the financial sector uh, industry across Latin America. I'm talking about Brazil, Mexico, uh, Peru, Argentina, Colombia, all the customers. Now, to be a bit more specific, I wanted to uh, show you what are the uh, four areas that we see that are taking immediate uh, attention, that is the uh, urgent needs from, from our customers, things that we need to act uh, immediately. So you see here uh, that enabling the digital experience is one very important thing. Adapting for in-person service because of the scenario that I just described is absolutely uh, urgent. Uh, managing this credit recalibration that I just mentioned a few moments ago. And also, there are across the region, multiple governments working to have stimulus packages to protect and to continue to uh, evolve with the economic needs of our region, right? And there is a lot of distribution needs in terms of these um, uh, financial aid programs to um, open sorts and all parts of the society. And that those are uh, important um, uh, needs that we are hearing every day. Now, let me give you a few examples of how we see technology uh, helping with those challenges of the immediate needs, urgent needs, and how are we seeing these experiences happening. So, for example, in the case of enabling digital experiences, what is the scenario here? Uh, again, keeping our uh, the branches open, keeping also the digital services to our customers uh, on uh, um, um, on the long term, it's very important. So we are seeing the need of applying technologies like the virtual desktop uh, uh, applications to our customers, right? So that desktops can be secured, that people can go to their works to. Uh, work remotely and that the experience regarding connectivity from those um, the teams working remotely at serving the customers are happening in a very good uh, quality and with a lot of a good experience, right? So the need is to immediately secure this um, enablement of the digital work. Um, and there is one more, one more specific point. Before going digitally was a nice to have uh, expectation. Now is a mandatory thing. You, it's very hard to understand if and how customers will be allowing themselves to go to a physical branch uh, or if they are going to be continue to adapting the digital way of being served by the banks and financial institutions. So one example of technology here is the virtual desktop to allow your employees to work securely uh, and, and protected at home, having the very seamless uh, experience uh, among themselves and also to serve their customers. I think the next point that is really important for us to go uh, in detail a little bit on adapting in-person service for the business that still needs to, in the middle of the crisis, continue to operate physically, uh, we have been seeing an increased interest in using technologies uh, like the video analytics uh, service. Why is that? Many of our customers were already using uh, the video analytics video uh, services uh, to provide branch security and also to improve, continue to improve the experience of, of the customers, again, providing physical security. What are we talking here about? It's a um, algorithm that can translate images 
and uh, provide alerts to any specific customer or any specific security situation that happens in the branch, providing uh, alerts and um, and also actions that needed to be taken, all digitally sparked in terms of all the processes and procedures that needs to take uh, action be behind that. So I think the important piece here is how to use technology, artificial intelligence kind of technology to allow for the physical and digital security to happen uh, as you need also to scale your operation. Right, so this is a good example that we are we are seeing being used like in several banks in Brazil, uh, using inclusive um, cameras of the public safety uh, environment in those countries. I think the next uh, big thing that is super important is how are the financial institutions uh, reacting to this credit recalibration and also for the new regulations uh, uh, around the loans and uh, payment terms and extension payment terms for the loans out there. So, for example, in Brazil, I'm aware that the government demanded uh, the, decided to credit extension uh, in payments for additional two months. The example for Mexico is actually four months. Chile I have here six months, so on and so forth. So how uh, are the financial institutions immediately reacting to those um, requests or requirements from the governments and how internally the operations are going to be ready to recalibrate for those credits and to be ready to scale the amount of calls that all those customers are going to put your way. So what we are seeing here is using high performing computing uh, to adjust for this scalability need uh, of immediately responding to those uh, specifically needs. Uh, so just as one example that I wanted to bring to you is that, for example, we can now manage, um, based on this technology, we can manage more than 300,000 calls per day, right, to allocate 80,000 uh, retail loans calibration in a very short term. We can put a bot, for example, which is the agent of artificial intelligence to at the front line of your operation to be ready to respond to those volumes that I just mentioned in just as few as a week. So this is the kind of things that we are seeing that are helping institutions to cope with immediate uh, actions and, and needs uh, to, to be ready to navigate the uh, moment that we are living on. The last one is about, um, you know, the uh, financial aid programs that I was just mentioning a few minutes ago. Uh, and we know that Latin America is also a, an environment where uh, we have millions of people not having access to bank um, services. So how financial institutions are going to be able to create digital wallet kind of platforms to allow for people to um, uh, to put themselves active online and be able to receive those aids, again, in a matter of days, because that's the purpose, right? The government putting together those programs to um, immediately activate these to be distrib distributed in all um, places of the countries and, of course, in the region. So we've talked a lot about the short term, how to react to the immediate needs of this uh, crisis that we are living right now. But it's very important that we also start right now to realign the digital strategy of our institutions and to reimagine what is going to be the new normal after this crisis. I'm sure we are going to get out of this. But the question is, what is going to be the new behavior of our customers, the new needs of our employees, and the new business models that will come out of this uh, this moment, right? So we have a point of view of uh, how to realign the digital strategy. We've been talking about the digital transformation uh, with our customers um, on the last couple of years. Uh, on top of those four pillars that you see here, right? So reimagine the future of digital your digital strategy will, in our point of view, pass through empowering your people 
uh, engage, uh, continue to engage with your customers outside of their new needs, uh, optimizing your operations so you are able to reduce your fixed costs and still have the scalability uh, to continue to capture the opportunity out there. And last one is to transform products and services towards the new needs of your customers. So what would that be in terms of technologies that could be out there to support you to make uh, those pillars evolve to this reimagined uh, digital strategy? So for example, uh, in empowering people, the productivity and the new ways of collaboration, of co-creation of people still working remotely, we believe this is going to be continued, uh, a, a concrete a scenario out of this crisis, right? Uh, we don't believe that people will be coming uh, as it used to be to the offices. So continue to think about what does it mean to your company, to your financial institutions? It, it's going to be super important, right? What are the uh, environment that you want to create digitally so that people can be at their best? The thing, the, 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 along those lines on engager, engaging customers, it's important that the best experience connecting all the services and all the needs of your customers will be uh, able to happen digitally, right? So we see an even um, biggest uh, importance of the virtual agents and how to make sure that your customers will have simple ways of reaching out to your services and be satisfied. And actually even for you to be able to use the, the amount of volume that you have on data in your organization to anticipate customers. So it's not only, in our view, it's not only about re reducing costs, but in reimagining your digital strategy, what is the importance of the data that you have about your customers? What is this data telling you about new opportunities, about new services, and about new experiences that you have to provide? So we see this opportunity of the digital bots, artificial intelligence, a very strong data strategy that will allow you to connect the dots and, and have new insights to, to your business. Optimizing operations is super important. So I want to get back to the example I gave, I think a couple of slides ago, uh, to be able to manage the manage risk through high performing computing because of the volume of requests that you have to cope with is very important. So again, high performing computing will help you to deal with those, uh, enormous amount of requests and data in a very much easier and fast way so that you can, again, look at your customers and serve them in an optimized way. Also, how you do to uh, use all the capacity that you have on your infrastructure in a smart way, how you make the, you know, to snooze and non-production services and transfer capacity from one service, one application to the other. This is very important so that you are not adding costs. And the last one is about transforming uh, products and services. And uh, there is here the need of, again, hyper, hyper personalized kind of services that will only uh, be available if you have uh, the best possible data strategy, that, that, that you understand the insights uh, on, on these trends, the new trends of your customers. So those, those are the important things that we, we see here. This is a glimpse of what we see. We see again technology of uh, as a, a mean, uh, as a um, uh, um, help for you to reimagine and make the future real. Uh, we would love to partner more and more with your institution, with your company to put the best brew and the uh, state-of-the-art technology that we have been investing to help you design the future. But I think the, the positive message that I want to leave us with is there is a new future. And our role uh, as leaders is to go and design and prepare for this future, learning as much as we can about the moment that we are living. And I, I'm very proud to be, you know, uh, inspired by the mission that we have at Microsoft, just to leave you uh, with our own mission, which is to, through technology as a mean, to allow every person and every organization in the planet, in, more importantly in crisis and moments like this, to achieve more with technology at your service. So if you need um, 
any anything from us if you uh, uh, need any thing on my side, here's my connection. I'll be always available and the team of Microsoft in Latin America, it's, uh, it's, it's here to help you. Thank you very much. Please be safe.